What's up, Fireside family? Finally, I'm getting my voice back little by little. Still struggling a bit, but I'm looking forward to feeling 100% by the end of the week. I will be in and out of the Fireside Lounge as I am directing yet another show. So uh, there are so many hours in a day, so you got to do what you can. With that being said, hit the subscribe button because we have a lot of guests coming up on Sunday. I'm going to have an in-depth with Sam Aker from Sam Aker Finance. If you haven't already, check out his website, samakerfinance.com, and give his material a read. The link is in the description below. And more specifically, check out his new ongoing series, Guide to Microcap Stock Analysis. There is a tab at the top of the page. Also, in two weeks, I will have IGPK CEO Gene Kaizewan again for a live Q&A. So many of you are getting into IGPK now as it appears to be consolidating around 002. But one thing I will say is that I have had Gina twice. Um, he's tr very transparent. Uh, the company has no convertible debt and is canceling 203.5 million shares. It seems to me this company has a lot planned in 2023 and moving into 2024. If you want me to ask anything specifically to Gene, throw it down in the comments section or join live on April 30th. So like I said, join the BFC fam, turn on the alerts so you can be notified when we go live with people in the trenches of the OTC, like CEOs and VPs, managing directors and investors, big and small, just like us. Uh, so the reason why you clicked on this video, here is my take on the ILIS financials, as well as some opinions from some popular names in the ILIS and OTC community. First, these financials were delayed. Yes, we know they filed for an extension, but with great reason. And you know, Monday came and we got the ILS financials right, right away. So they didn't even take advantage of that full extension. Uh, they confirmed that their focus was uh, the filings for their huge subsidiary QIND, Quality International, where you know they wanted to make things efficient and error free, and they did so. So, so quickly about QIND, uh, Fred Z sums this up nicely. Uh, this really puts things in perspective. I am retweeting this ILIS post. 75% ownership of QIND is 3.3 cents per ILIS share. ILIS is currently trading at 4.1 cents. So the non-QIND part of ILIS is currently being valued at double <laughs> zero seven after this portion produced $27 million annualized. Way too low. Current ILIS value is 9 cents. So let's look at another... Uh, uh, tweet by ultimate trader he sums up the uh 2022 annual report very nicely you know 595 percent revenue increase over 2021 that is a success all right here he puts below are some of the financial highlights from the filing revenue 78.3 million net profit 4.5 million revenue run rate 104 million and total assets of a quarter billion dollars and a 2023 annual revenue forecast of 200 million plus um, and he includes additional business progress highlights uh, about the audits being completed for 2021 and 2022 that's awesome sec reporting and they are penny stock exempt and they have expanded to 11 companies in the eyeless group all right that is big this this isn't just one company this is a mergers and acquisitions conglomerate um, 150 million dollars in existing purchase orders and an increase to over 10 million square feet in facilities and workforce of over 1,200. They have a huge workforce in that ILIS conglomerate, and a lot of it, most of it, is contributed to the QID acquisition. Um, here's a quote from JP Backwell. Our 2022 annual results confirm our impressive growth as a company. Since the start of 2023, we have been forging ahead with several key areas identified for improvement and expansion across the group, and it is satisfying to see the progress we have made towards this in the first quarter. So I'm really excited to see what kind of fins we get in or in May, so for the, the quarter one. So that's going to be great. So here's my opinion. I, the best is yet to come with this company. Those of you who have followed me know I'm keeping up to date with the DD. You know I have reached out to management multiple times, as well as had Managing Director JP on the show numerous times, and I look forward to having him back on. But this is the fact. The share price is where nobody wants it. But I look at this as an opportunity to average down when I can. Um, I'm not loading a bunch of money in this right now. I, I've already made my position. So do I think the stock is going to a big board? I do. This year, probably not. But like I said earlier, don't forget about QIND, which is heading there. Also, another reminder, don't forget about their fully owned subsidiary, ERT, which has an acquisition target worth $60 million and could be the missing component in expanding Firebug products deep into the U.S. market. I'm holding this one for years to come. I want continued long-term capital gains, and I'd like to see the specifics of the lockup and what will be in it for the long-term shareholder. And yes, have they executed everything perfectly? Absolutely not. They would be the first to admit it. 
Uh, and I'd say for the first two years, acquiring a quarter billion in assets and $80 million in revenues in 2022 and so on, you know, they're doing great things. And yes, the profit margin needs work, you know, and I think we're going to see that improve throughout the year, especially if we see a closed acquisition uh, with ERT. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, and we have a long way to go. And I will happily add down here because when macroeconomic conditions improve, when overall global sentiment improves, I will be enjoying the ride instead of chasing for their entry points. Also, another company that I believe uh, that seems to have a lot going on is DVLP. Now, this one is one of many on my watch list that I wish I could get into because of long-term possibilities, and I'm hoping the opportunity presents itself before the surge uh, because, uh, you know, I hate having to chase a, a higher bottom, but, you know, you, the, the the whole goal is to get in these plays as early as possible. But, hey, that's sort of the fun of it. That That's the thrill of the OTC. And, listen, if you're on Twitter, I want you to follow Mr. Hobbs. He has a ton of info. And reach out to him as they have a DVLP telegram as well. Uh, check out this tweet. And I did verify the sources that were PR'd by the company in February this year. So um, DVLP, not a shell, not a possible merger. Actually just waiting for filings of revenues from four newly completed acquisitions in the fourth quarter of 2022. The CEO has said numerous times those four companies made over $100 million in consolidated revenues uh, per year. Oh, and by the way, they have more in the pipeline besides these four. Uh, so read that article that I put in the description. Uh, not to mention the very little debt, only about 17000 in debt. I will be putting the link to this article for your reading pleasure. You know, read it to your kids for bedtime. You know, the, the, this type of material tends to knock out children. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be looking forward to their filings. And then I could really do a deep dive into how sound the fundamentals have been executed. Very exciting stuff, guys. Listen, uh, we're, there's a lot of red in the market. Remember, buy the red, sell the green, do your due diligence, find those long-term holds. And remember, there's more that binds us than breaks us. Have a great day. Peace. Peace.